This week on the Infinite Loop Show, we have rumors, confirmations. Old ladies slamming into glass windows, <laughs> office jerks, plumbers crack. Where do we leave Tim Cook this time? And all that and more on the Infinite Loop Show to the power of 10. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode 10, take two. No, there's only one take. <laughs> no, yeah, we do I everything in one take. I don't know what you're take. talking about. Listen, every now and then, we're allowed to have a little screw up. That was, it was, it was 10.0 beta. The screw up on the part of Time Warner. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> take... Take that, conglomerate. Either that or it's because you kicked off the people in your house that were downloading porn. It had to be done for the greater good. For the greater good. Sometime you just have to take one for the team. That's right. And Well, mm-hmm. this is episode 10, ding 10. Yay! We leveled. <laughs> now, every time we die, we're going to have to run all the way back to the graveyard. <laughs> But at the same time, we get our first point in our talent tree. So the first this point. This is true. <laughs> we can start on our AAs. The fr- Rejoice. <laughs> start on our AAs. Oh, good. EQ1, high five. Yay. <laughs> We're so nerdy. Speaking of, well, all right, speaking of games, let's, let's get to uh, games on the iPad. The, the classic game Baldur's Gate is making its way to the iPad finally. Yay. So right, did you play... You played uh, Baldur's Gate, right, on Mac OS 9 because we talked mm-hmm. about this in 10.0 beta? <laughs> no, we didn't. All right, so <laughs> you played under you played under Mac OS 9, right? It's either 9 or, yeah, um, just after 10 came out. Mm-hmm. Right around that time, um, right. I played the older Baldur's Gate where it was like 8... CDs or some Why craziness. Oh, uh, see, I played it on the on the PlayStation Two. Mm, okay. And oh, I played that one too. Oh my god. Um, what was it? You're an they, addict. they kept saying no. Um, oh god. Ed and I would stay up like way late and playing this. Either I would be playing and he'd watch, or he'd be playing and I'd watch. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. There was. One quote that was fantastic in it, where something like your character would say, "Like I can't hold all that," or "Oh yeah, I, it wasn't... I don't have it up in my chest," or something like that. Or I used to be an adventurer just like you before I took an arrow to the knee. Oh no, wait, that's, that's a different diamond. show, a different that's game. My favorite meme, <laughs> if only. But no, yeah, this could like. This probably was a meme for the time, but I just wasn't in tune to internet memes at at this given time. But yeah, the character just kept saying like, oh, I, I don't have enough room for that or mm-hmm. I can't carry that. Oh, it was hilarious. That was good times. Doritos and Mountain Dew. And, uh. Uh, playing Baldur's Gate. I, I used to love those dungeon <laughs> crawlers. What? What are you laughing at? No, nothing. It's fantastic. Do you hear the music? Certainly not your Enya you're playing. That's not Enya. <laughs> that's not Enya. That's Baldur's okay. Gate. Remember the it's... girl in... I think it was oh, the girl in the pub that used to sing the song. This is this is the elf song. You don't remember this? No. No. Oh, it was a... Oh, it was... Um, oh, anyway... And now I just realized that I'm going to have to add this into the podcast because I'm not recording Sounds the like audio out of my Mac. Or <laughs> it's not. You know, okay, I'll just stop it. <clears throat> not sure it's not. Anyway, um, yeah, Baldur's Gate was one of those games um, that I used to love to play. And uh, there was a mechanic in it that I didn't like, which was if you do a dungeon, you can't redo it to gain more levels or gain more stuff. Once you did, once you did a dungeon... What? It was bullshit right there. It was. Uh, once you did a, a dungeon, that was it. You cleared it out and you were done. And I didn't like that because like in other games where... I can't think of one off the top of my head, but there are other games where you can clear out a dungeon, 
and then go like back. Like every other game, like <clears throat> every other game, literally. Yeah, pretty much. You go back. Maybe you'd have to wait a few hours or 24, but almost if it was a single player game, you could pretty much go right back mm-hmm. and and just and just do it know, over again. Re- respawn. Yeah. And level yourself up. Now, the reason why they limited you is because they didn't want you get, getting too many levels and then you just wind up steamrolling through the game. I can totally understand that. But at the same time, you're almost a little gimped sometimes. And so there I wasn't guess. that little happy medium in between, which I, I always wanted uh, from Baldur's Gate. Um, this was the, the, the dungeon crawler that also spawned uh, Champions of Norath. Mm-hmm. And Champions Return to Arms, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, and and oh man, I used to love that. The the, <laughs> the the one thing that that I used to love is just smashing all the barrels in the boxes. Every time you yeah. was like barrel, <laughs> it's like There's my OCD kicked in. And just that still kind of uh, take that into account. Um, I think Diablo did it, didn't it? And Reckoning today does it. Um, Reckoning does Kingdom, do that. Kingdoms of Amalur mm-hmm. uh, Which, does it. What else? Oh, um, DDO, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online. Does it? I did it. Don't have that. I don't have that game. That's a pretty. Eh. Eh. It's a it's a good MMO. I mean, it's got some really great stuff in it. In that, um, you could kind of like WoW did this after DDO, but mm-hmm. you could. Um, go back and redo a dungeon, but do it at higher difficulty levels. Mm-hmm. Or you could even, like, on your first try, you know, choose to do it on easy, medium, hard uh, difficulty levels for any kind of any dungeon. Mm-hmm. You can go back and you know revisit them at a higher difficulty level later. But they would give you, um, you know, there's a set amount of objectives for each instance. But then there's like bonus objectives. Say you smash all the crates and barrels in mm-hmm. the instance you get you know a certain bonus um amount of xp or money or what have you yep um so this is um this is a game by bioware and mm-hmm. this is based on if i remember correctly this is based on the dungeons and dragons rule set three i believe um, two or three yeah I don't know which one, but I, it's it's based on the the DD uh, rule set, mm-hmm. and I, to the best of my knowledge, Baldur's Gate always kind of has been. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've been talking about the game so much that we forgot to mention that it's coming out for the iPad, and how awesome oh, is that going to be? Okay. Now, I Look mean, at, I mentioned it, but uh, order and chaos. I tell you, I I've been playing Final Fantasy games on the phone on the iPhone because mm-hmm. so far as you know, the last time I checked, they haven't been optimized for the iPad, and that that's really disappointing. But to have Baldur's Gate on the iPad is just going to be great, and I, I can't really, wait. Really, I mean, iOS is such a great platform for all these older games to kind of have a resurgence. You, you know, know the old Nintendo games, the old Sega games, the mm-hmm. old computer and PC games. Did all of these need to be remade for iOS, and they would really just they would make a lot of money. Well, here's the thing. I, years ago, this is going back about ten years, when the Xbox, the original Xbox came out, um, there was a copy of the actual SDK that came out. Mm-hmm. I played with it for like a couple of days or something like that, but I didn't do anything with it at all. But the point is, is that it got me interested in in gaming for a console, and mm-hmm. I was always, I, I and that started my. Um, my interest in in what would it take for a guy or a group of people that would co-work, let's say, somewhere in, in, in the world and put out a good game. And I, yeah. I know we're, we're getting off topic a little bit, but um, but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to come full circle with this whole thing. Okay. <laughs> um, I started uh, programming for the Nintendo Game Game Boy. No, it wasn't the Game Boy. It was uh, what was the flip top one? It was the DS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was the mm-hmm. Nintendo DS, the one with the flip top one. I made a Space Invaders game. It was really easy, but mm. but in order to publish something, you had to be a known publisher. You couldn't just you couldn't just go to Microsoft or or Sony and say, 
here's ten thousand dollars. Give me your beta unit, uh, your beta, your development unit, so that we can start making stuff. You had to be an established, an established um, and weren't company. the licensing fees like and licensing like fees just to and, get yeah and all the this... right to make it and publish a game was kind of crazy. Yeah, it. I mean, people would complain that. Apple's developer, you know, like 99 bucks a year is crazy. <laughs> and how like, dare they? And how dare they take 30%, you know, for your apps? I know. And, oh my God. These people do not Compared understand. Compared to consoles and handhelds, it's a, that, that's like the old way, like the record industry and making movies, you know, the, the old school kind of mythology where you get, um, a publisher and a distributor and a, maybe a manager, you know, what the hell? And you got yeah. all these middlemen and they all want to cut and it's just like huge sums of money, probably because you got all these middlemen who want to cut, but yeah, well, even still, you know, that's such an old way of thinking, really. Yep. And now here comes the iPhone and the iPad where all you have to do is pay a hundred bucks for a license. Chances mm -hmm. are at least somebody's got a Mac that you can use. If not, oh, big deal. So you have to spend... 500 bucks on a mac mini at the very least right i mean game. seriously and you've got yeah. your, you got your damn game published now mm -hmm. there's a friend of mine mike schramm who um who works for toaw he just put out um he just put out an app a game it's a it's a pong base but it's like pong on steroids <laughs> and i'm blanking on the name i'm scrolling through because i want to make sure that he gets recognition for it um antithesis so mm. that's the name of it and um is it literally the antithesis of all games? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't downloaded it yet. But but my point is is that it gives those of us that are interested in programming and gaming the ability to do this. And mm -hmm. if if we wanted to, we can use the iPad as a springboard for doing consoles and such. Granted, three, five, ten people are not going to write the next Mass Effect, but it, it gives you a start to understand about how how. Um, optimizing your code and working with hardware as, as much as you can. Yeah. So it, <laughs> we basically spoke about 10 minutes on this whole thing. So, but I just think it's a great thing that, that Baldur's Gate is finally coming out and um, I'll be, I'll be one of the first to grab it. Mm. And hopefully it'll really open the floodgates for all kind of, you know, older, Games like this, mm -hmm. like I said, I would love to see more games. I mean, the original Diablo, the original, you know, some of the old Warcraft games. Come on, you can put those on an iPad. Sure. The original Diablo, uh, granted, use a, a mouse and a keyboard sometimes, but you can use your finger to, to tap where your person is supposed to go. Though I would like to mm -hmm. see an open Bluetooth solution for devices, like the iCade. iCade is uh, very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to. I would like to see the iPad as sort of a console in a way. And where, what like have like a game pad that works via Bluetooth, kind of like the Bluetooth sure, keyboard. Or? Sure. Like for example, you can like look at the iK. The iK's got um, um, a joystick. It's got mm -hmm. eight positions, and then a bunch of buttons. So how hard would it be for Apple to say, okay, look, this is going to be the standard way of adding a a gamepad or some sort of game device for the iPad because let's face it sometimes you're playing these games I'm trying to play the old marathon on the iPad it's awful you can't do it it drives me crazy and so if you could write it in such a way where you had a device and a device type and number of inputs being like is it a button is it a joystick is it a trackball is it a track mm -hmm. or um, a knob what were the what were the standard arcade? Well, that's those were the standard ones. You had a you had a flight stick, an analog flight stick. You had an um, eight position joystick. You had um, a knob. You had a trackball, and then buttons, and that was it. Those five, I think, were the only ones. And all you have to do is just do that, and you're done. And then all these game yeah. developers would probably you'd probably see more. Like I would love to play Crash Bandicoot again on the iPad. Oh. Crash Bandicoot Two, boom. All you got to do is just write an interface for like my my wireless PlayStation device, um, mm -hmm. PlayStation Two, um, or even even the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Just write for this thing, and you're done. Mm. And developers would love that. I think. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think so too. Um, 
But I guess that, that kind of goes back into that walled garden argument where mm. Apple knows best and we can't possibly know <laughs> what they have in store. <clears throat> so. no. Speaking of floodgates, uh, Adobe opened Photoshop CS6 to beta and mm-hmm. 500,000 people downloaded it. Of course. Did you? No. Not yet. <laughs> I honestly haven't had time. Um no, I yeah, I heard about this and I've been reading reviews, um you know, uh, listening to other podcasts talk about it and its capabilities. And to be honest, it's probably going to be like every other Adobe update up until this point where I, I hear about it and I read about it and I'm like, you know, that's nice. It's not terribly different than what I have right now because mm-hmm. it's I have CS5 now. It's only CS6. It's not that different. I can wait. You know, I, maybe I can even sit this update out. Mm-hmm. I go through this every time. And then right up until <laughs> like the eve that it comes out, I'm like, bye! I can't live without it. Here's 500 bucks. 500? Aren't you paying for updates? Um, I've been a student for a long time. <laughs> well, I, I've been paying for updates. I, I did skip CS5 because there really wasn't anything in there that I needed. So I skipped CS5. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. I think I'm going to wind up going with CS6. Um, it depends on whether or not it's going to run on this machine. This machine is so old. I keep saying that oh, every what? damn show. <laughs> These reasons why you need to upgrade just keep piling up. Oh, God. And the Ivy Bridge machines are supposed to be out in like a month, or at least announced within a month or two. They're like around the corner. We could like literally kind of see them around the corner. I know. And, you know, I was thinking, it's like when the machine comes, I'm going to buy a new machine, but when it comes, do do I hug it? (laughs) Mm -mm. Do I hug my new Mac? Or Mm -hmm. not? (laughs) Do <laughs> you send a personal letter to Tim Cook? And no, just... I'm not going to do anything like that. It's just this this damn thing's been such a workhorse for six years. I no, yeah, I, I you really, I mean, as much you know, complaining and griping as we do, I, for a, a top of the line machine to last that long is really a testament. It's yeah. a testament to their hardware and their software, really. And I could probably get another good two years out of it if it wasn't for the fact that they were dropping support for the hardware. So, anyway, moving on. Sony, uh, their music, uh, their music system is coming to the uh, to the Mac, which I'm kind of surprised at, but not really. I, it was a system that was designed specifically for Sony devices and um, and the PlayStation Three, right? Mm-hmm. And I just really didn't think that it had the 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 support on just such a limited heart. Look, I love the PlayStation Three. You have one. I have one. We know yeah, it's a great no, machine. I love Sony and I love Sony products for gaming and TVs. Mm-hmm. I am not a fan of their MP3 players or anything else. No. And I was surprised Sony years ago had the ability. They they had the the means to create what apple did years ago they yeah. could have come out with something kick ass and they didn't anyway the point is is that their music system is coming to the mac uh to, um well the ios specifically and i think this is good because it gives competition to itunes match mm-hmm. along with um uh google music and there there was um i think it was the unlimitedness is that a word Sure. Uh, the unlimited access to Sony's music for a monthly fee was was attractive to me, but that was before iTunes Match came out. And sort of, I'm, I'm sort of weighing the difference between paying two dollars a month, you know, twenty four dollars a year for mm-hmm. iTunes Match versus do I want another system? Mm-hmm. And so I'm not quite sure what I'm I'm going to do now that iTunes Match is out. Yeah. But. I think this is a good alternative, and it gives people the ability to to do it on their iOS devices. So it's going to compete heavily with Spotify. I know, and I was just going to say, I really haven't looked into this as thoroughly as maybe I should, probably specifically because I have Spotify. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't care to really look at other... um, other subscription music 
providers. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm already paying 10 bucks a month for Spotify. I love it. I'm happy with it. I mean, not to say that it's perfect or anything, but I, I for what I'm getting out of it, it totally works for my lifestyle and I love it. Mm. And so any other subscription services, kind of like you're saying, even though, um, I mean, Match is and isn't a subscription service, but you're, you know, you're using that full time. And so you don't really, A, you don't want to look anywhere else because you kind of have your needs met. Mm -hmm. And B, nobody wants to be paying for two of these things. <laughs> right. Well, that's you know, the if thing. you're already paying for one, why would you look anywhere else? Yeah, see, that's that's the hard part about what I'm doing with uh, with iTunes Match is that I love the ability to have all my music on my phone whenever I, or my iPad wherever I am. Mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. come in handy so many times. Oh, I want to listen to a Flock of Seagulls. Boom, there it is. Well, okay, maybe not yeah, a Flock of Seagulls. I could but... <laughs> see that coming up. <laughs> no, but there are times when I, I'm in the mood to listen to something and it's it's there. It's on my phone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And okay. So. <laughs> and yes, it's, just, it's like I'm I'm okay. preaching to the choir. I think so. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're both on different services a little bit. I think you're more into iTunes Match, and I'm. Again, I I haven't even set foot in iTunes Match because I'm I I've got everything in Spotify, and I'm like, well, why? You know, I've left my iTunes yeah. library in the dust and totally gone all Spotify. Have you? It just seems like, I mean, the purchase music required a lot of upkeep, mm -hmm. you know, where anytime I hear something on the radio that I like, then I got to go home, I got to find it either on the iTunes store or somewhere else. And and then I've got to get it in my library. I've got to sync everything up uh, and then adjust maybe some playlists if I feel like it, you know, and there's just a lot of upkeep there mm -hmm. with a subscription service, like literally all you have to do is search. And I can do that anywhere. I don't have to wait till I get home. I can do it on my phone. And then it's synced with my desktop, my iPad, whatever, instantaneously. And I don't have to like, and it's not like a search, mm -hmm. download, and then reorganize process. It's a right. one-step process, literally. But what do you own? Like, let's say, let's say you decide to drop Spotify. Does it drop all the music? Because if you're streaming all mm -hmm. this stuff... Well, yeah, any that was... playlist that I've made in Spotify uh, go up, go up in smoke, you know, just mm -hmm. leave. So all the music I own is whatever I owned when I stopped, you know, when I started Spotify mm -hmm. like a year and a half ago. So, um, I mean, I still have music. I still have an iTunes library, but it, currently it's not, it's not sunk with my phone or my iPad. I don't have any music mm -hmm. on like literally on the local disc of my phone or iPad, all I have is Spotify. I have Pandora, but I barely open that. And Stitcher is a big okay. thing for my podcast. So then I have all of my bases covered between Spotify and Stitcher. Hmm. And Every now go. and then I keep saying I'm going to look into Spotify. I'm going to look into Spotify. And then I, I fire up the, the, the app and I go, nah. app irks me. The service is the really awesome, but the app just... Bugs the, the desktop shit out of me. one, yeah, I mean, whatever. And and the mobile one is, is a stripped down version and really you don't need a whole lot of functionality for the mobile one cuz I'm just going to go to my I'm either going to go to my playlists that are already made mm -hmm. or I'm going to search for something and start playing it. Mm -hmm. So I I need like two basic screens of functionality. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Apple is starting to reject apps for using the unique device identifier, the UDID. Now, I personally think that this is somewhat important because mm -hmm. as a developer, uh, what I'm doing now for work is I say to people that are, are testing the app, there are about, 20, no, about 15, 20 people that are testing the app. For every single one of them, I have to say, go get this app called Ad Hoc Helper from Erica Sudun and and they run it and then they email me their UDID and then I have to go into my developer mm -hmm. account and and make a list of approved devices. So it saves me a lot of trouble. Apple is starting to reject apps that access this. There is another way. You can, um, if you plug in your phone, your iPad into iTunes, I believe it's, you press either controller or option. I don't remember whichever one it was. 
And um, you do it over the it's one of the fields in the summary of your I, of your I, iOS device. And it'll mm-hmm. give you the UDID and you can copy it. But it's a manual process. You have to plug it in. Then you got to deal with the whole syncing issue if you have that automatically turned on. And sometimes people just want to just give me their damn number. So I'm not quite sure I'm happy about this. But the re- I don't even know exactly why they're doing I mean, I do, but I don't. It's what? I mean, it, it sounds like... And and again, I mean, I, I've made apps, but I've never actually you know, published anything to the iTunes store. So mm-hmm. I don't know what that process is like, but to me, I'm like this, it sounds like they're, well, they're rejecting apps from the store that do this. Mm-hmm. So if you're already at that point, why is it trying to access the, um, UDID? Well, at that point, it feels like, you know, well, yeah, that makes sense. They should reject those. It shouldn't have access to that. Why is it trying to do that? And if you're, and I can understand your your point from a troubleshooting, um, you know, debugging standpoint that this is why we have it. Mm-hmm. But I'm also thinking like there has to be a better way to do that. A, I mean, isn't there a way that you can kind of publish to the store, but not quite enough to where People can you can send people like a a redeem coupon to yeah. download it through the store and test it that way so that you're not putting them on your developer plan uh, because well yeah but you don't want necessarily want to put something on the store that's not fully tested I mean you could do it that way okay so there's no like well I mean there's no like it's it's on the store but only for like kind of backdoor downloading for testing where it's not fully on the store there's mm. no solution like that no no there isn't basically what i do okay. is i build my app in, in xcode and then i do what's called a build and archive and then that puts it in with into what's called the organizer from right, there right. i export it and then from there i put it on a server but everything is tied together with an ad hoc certificate and, and the certificate has a list of all the supported devices in it. And that's mm-hmm. what you have to do. So that if, let's say, I give the app to you, the certificate, um, which is signed, by the way, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of obvious, but I'm just saying that. No, yeah, yeah. So when you're on a team, you know, everybody on the team can have access to this code. As soon as you hit run and build, mm-hmm. they can do that and, and run it on, on the device and test it. Sure, sure. Um But I guess Apple's stance is that, okay, you do that as much as you want in your, in, you know, your design house. But as soon as you pack it up and ship it to us for the iTunes store, you better clean that, you know, list up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's what it sounds like. So they're doing this to, to alleviate some of the privacy concerns. I can understand that. But right. at the same time, like a lot of gamers, a lot of game uh, developers use this for high scores to make sure they're not being spoofed. But oh. hmm. but at the same time, you just log in with your login password or your uh, your Game Center ID. I was going to say, isn't that, I mean, they have Game Center now. Yeah, so I don't really understand why the developers are getting all pissy about this. Because Apple said that this was mm-hmm. going to happen months ago. Right, they did. They warned you, and uh, same. I mean, it, it's kind of like the same argument as the sandboxing thing, where mm-hmm. a lot of developers are like, "No, you know, we're not done making it. You know, making um, them ready for <laughs> the sandboxing uh, architecture yet." Yeah. Um, but I loved on this article. Was it in um, TUAW? Mm-hmm. I think that they, <laughs> one of the developers that they quoted was apparently the um, affluent and well-known maker of such notable apps as Office Jerk and (laughs) Plumber Crack. (laughs) Quite the resource Uh, they have uh, there to get a quote from. I'm I'm very glad to hear the opinions. uh, (laughs) Because really, I mean, I would really hate to see Office jerk and plumber <laughs> crack, crack go away. Not be able to get on the iTunes store. I mean, that would just be a travesty. Microsoft, on the other hand, what they're doing is they're they're putting a uh, ten million dollars into pushing <laughs> guilt trips into into companies to develop for Windows Phone Seven. 
Did I say that right? Is it Windows Phone 7? Because I can never get that name straight. Windows 7 Phone. Windows Phone, phone thing 7. 7. There's a 7 and there's a phone and it's Windows. Okay. Well, anyway, Windows Phone 7, whatever it is. <laughs> whatever they call it. I, I remember there was, a, there was an article about three months ago where somebody had written down all the different versions of the name for Windows Phone 7. It was really hilarious. Oh, anyway, the... Um, so Microsoft is basically saying, if you don't publish for Windows Phone 7, we're going to promote competing apps. Mm-hmm. That's horrible. That's just, yeah, they're, that's terrible. And not just like promote, they're going to like monetarily promote. I mean, they're putting money aside specifically to funnel to competitors of major apps and Mm -hmm. and in this article they cite heavily pandora yeah as an example pandora does not currently develop for windows phone they have an ios and i'm pretty sure they have a um an android Android. version of the app they do not have a windows phone version Mm -hmm. so microsoft would like to funnel money to other subscription you know or free music services like Spotify, who mm-hmm. make an app for Windows Phone. Right, or RDO, or, or somebody else. So, yeah, some of the underdogs that are kind of competing with Pandora um, so that they have a leg up Yeah, um, I think to really a, punish Pandora to it, not, yeah. It's a terrible tactic. It's it, Because basically what you're doing is you get a CEO that's stubborn. The first thing that's going to happen is is they're going to say, you know what, we're not going to publish for Windows Phone Seven because you're basically pissing on us. No, yeah, even if like say say they do this, and then Pandora was maybe in the talk of you know kind of thinking about maybe discussing, maybe they even had like plans drawn up. But if this came out and they start funneling money into like Spotify, RDO, mm-hmm. and I saw this, I would be like, oh hell no. Screw them. That's it. Scrap all those plans. We're never developing for Windows Phone. <laughs> There's something... I mean, it would turn me away completely. It wouldn't be like, oh, hurry up, hurry up, guys. We're losing ground. I would think that the Federal Trade Commission would have something to say about this because th- th- this borders on unethical. Well, it's not like they've been, they haven't been hit with, uh, you know, monopoly and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I understand that, before. but um, I just really don't like this 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 whole thing. It just it makes it makes Microsoft look real douchey. Oh, because they didn't before. Well, only because it's it's basically Microsoft saying, "Look, we're late to the party. We know we suck, so we're yeah, gonna strong a- arm people." And then and then developers are just gonna say. You know what? We're making money with iOS and we're making money with Android. So mm-hmm. who are you? Yeah, you were good on the desktop they years are ago. Tanya Harding gonna take a crowbar to <sighs> freaking Nancy oh, Kerrigan's no. knees. That's you, what you went Windows there. Phone is. You went oh, there. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it too soon for Tanya Harding <laughs> jokes? I'm sorry. Microsoft is the new Tanya Harding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that what it is? I mean, is it not? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> She's going to take a crowbar. They're late to, the to every party. Look at the freaking Zoom. That was so late. They just ushered it, like did a freaking U-turn. They just went right back out the door. <laughs> Langley in the chat room says it's going to take a crowbar to the knee. You know, that was a <laughs> meme before it was a meme. Oh, you're welcome, Internet. All right. So tell us about what old ladies like to do. Apparently, <laughs> you make your store, you know, just glass all the way, you know, walls of glass. And I mean, why wouldn't you? It looks so awesome and attractive. But when you just have walls of glass, old ladies, you know, and I mean, they're they're old. Their eyesight's not so hot. They tend to apparently just walk right the fuck into them. Yeah. Boom. And, and we'll sue you um, for having awesome walls of glass that uh, they just walked into. Not for nothing, but I saw pictures of that area. What are you doing walking around? Why are you not walking along the handrails? Especially if you have bad eyesight, why are you walking into the into glass doors in the first place? Because not for nothing, but there's glass 
everywhere in shopping centers. So what makes Apple so damn special? Well, because no, yeah. you didn't see it? A lot of stores have, I mean, maybe not floor to ceiling glass, but almost a lot of stores have, you know, just glass um, storefronts where mm-hmm. maybe they'll start a foot off the ground, mm-hmm. but it'll be mostly glass. And it's not like they don't have stuff directly on the other side of the glass. Mm-hmm. Apple's, no Apple store is just glass and it just, there you go. There's nothing. It's just open. They have on either side of the doors, they have, you know, those displays that usually has a product on a pedestal mm-hmm. or the big posters or balloons or something on the on the floor something. right on the other side of the yeah. glass. There's something on the other side of the glass that's a display in the <laughs> in the storefront. It doesn't just open up into the store. So <laughs> even if you they didn't left see all their the crap class. out. You're just like gonna w- run over some balloons or run right into the posters. I don't know. Right, because that's what stores do. They leave all their crap out on the front, just like a lawn sale. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but I'm just I'm not buying the whole thing. She walked into a glass. No, door. I think she went and talked to that person who sued McDonald's over the hot coffee incident, and she was like, "You know, you're right." Ah, uh, yeah, right. I- got too much money and we need to do something about that <laughs> all right tell us about these iphone 5 rumors ah uh, iphone 5 uh, we got the you. ipad out and uh, it's time to talk about the next device already well yeah we're about six months out so i guess they're gonna start so, yeah let let the games begin mm-hmm. um so i mean a couple of does 4g lte duh duh um Micro dock connector. This is a rumor that was kind of floating around for the iPad 3. Yeah. I heard some people saying that there might be a new dock connector. There might be a new port on it that didn't come to pass. And so I kind of feel like with a lot of rumors, you know, either for the new iPhone or the new iPad, they seem almost interchangeable. Mm-hmm. When they don't come to pass for one device, they just kind of like graduate on to the next device. And they're like, well, it could still happen. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the iPhone 5. No, it, it'll still happen. Well, the progression uh, went firewire to USB to the, the new dock connector, and then now we're going to get a new one. And Maybe. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I think that one's pretty unlikely. But then one that I was kind of surprised about, I mean, mainly because I kind of don't want this to be true, mm-hmm. but the iPhone 5 is going to have, that the iPhone 5 is going to have the same 3.5 inch screen. Yeah, you and I were talking about this last night. Here's, from a developer's point of view, I want the screen to be, at, well, not necessarily the same size, but I want it to be the same resolution or else you start messing mm-hmm. around with graphics and, and yeah. if you're a good programmer, then you're not depending on absolute X and Y positions. You're doing everything dynamically. You're doing elastic, you know, percentages right. or so, M's at the very least. You're not um you're not measuring in pixels anymore. Yeah. For example, so. if if you want to get the width and height of the screen that you're currently on, you say, give me the width and height, not just hard code it to three twenty by four eighty or something like that. But so I can understand how you you want a bigger screen. You know what? I I agree with you on that. I think a bigger screen would be fine. But as I was saying yesterday is that I wear my phone on my belt clip. And the bigger the phone gets, then it's it's almost like when I had the um the compact eye pack where it's like dragging you down to one side. Okay, why do you like wear it on your belt clip then? Where else am I supposed to put it? I don't know, your pocket maybe? I don't wear, no, I don't put it in my pocket. I put it in my butt clip. I've been wearing phones on my butt clip for years. And it's just it's just handy to have it right there because then I don't have to worry about sitting on it. And I don't have to worry about it. Put it in it. your front pocket. My keys are in there. I don't want to get scratched up. Oh, do you only have one front pocket? Well, on the other pocket, I've got keys. I mean, no, keys, keys don't change. <laughs> don't change. Like I how just... many freaking keys are you, do you have? <sighs> All right, this show's over. No, I have <laughs> have change in my other pocket. I don't want that scratching the the glass either. Okay, so there's this thing called like a carabiner that the hipsters use. You could put your keys on that. <laughs> the hipsters that use. Pocket, okay. Then put your phone in your pocket like a normal person. Mm-hmm. 
How did we go from iPhone 5 rumors to this? I don't <laughs> That's know. That's crap on where Mike keeps his phone. No, really. Um, all right. So you were talking about you wanted the screen to go more out towards a smaller bevel. Yeah. Well, bezel, either bezel. a bigger um, a, a bigger screen overall mm-hmm. or, you know, just a smaller bevel. If you're going to keep the same kind of uh, chassis and, and case, fine. Then just go edge to edge. Yeah. You know, width and then m- smaller, you know, t- uh, I'll give you as that. Well. I'll give you that. Looking at the phone, I think there's a lot of room for improvement with the black on the top and the bottom. And then, yeah, you could probably mm-hmm. go out a little more to the edge. Yeah, it feels like there's a lot of room on the top and the bottom. And then you can go a little bit wider on the edges. But mm-hmm. I don't see why. So you scale the phone up just a little bit from the the current you know uh, case size, mm-hmm. and then do that as well. Why uh, three point eight, three point nine, maybe screen? I mean, it seems like a small difference, but I bet once you have that in your hand and you're looking at it, that would just be amazing. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see what the rumors are, but uh, or if the rumors are true, but for now. Uh, this is all we have to go on. I don't really think there are going to be any big surprises unless, again, I keep hoping for NFC, but maybe Apple just doesn't feel like it's worth it. Um, I just I would, I would, just really like that whole minority report thing where you walk into a store and you say, hey, Michael, we have a sale on this. I, I think that would be kind of neat. I would, I would what you're you're looking at me. So funny. wait, you want like stores to adopt Siri in their storefronts? No, so no, when no, you no, walk no, no. into like Seven Eleven, you can talk to the well, okay, the door chime that. <laughs> you know the um, you know how everybody checks into Foursquare, right? It would mm-hmm. be it would be interesting if you can walk into a restaurant, you know, like your favorite restaurant, and it would automatically do Foursquare check-ins for you, but. To be fair, I don't want it checking mm-hmm. me in everywhere. I want it. To, I want to be able to say, "Check me into these places automatically," yeah. and not everywhere else. But I think it would be nice when you walk into a store, you walk into a Best Buy, you say, "Oh, the new Rush CD is on sale," <laughs> and because they know that I like Rush, I like that. There was um, what was the app that that tried to do that about two years ago? Kick something. Um, Shopkick. Shopkick. They're still Kick. trying to do it. Actually. And it just doesn't work. Best be- Buy, re- like, was a, a partner in that, I, I believe. Yeah. If so. not, then they were really heavily invested in it. But, um, yeah, that was sad. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, the, the reason why is because it, it, you can't, I don't believe an app can get your geolocation when it's in the background. I don't think that's one of the rules. It can do networking. It can do push. Well, how does the GPS app work then? Because um, not in the background. MapQuest, the the free MapQuest app, will do it in the background. Will because um, it'll do voiceover for GPS and it'll do it in the background. Will it? I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna have to check. Unless on that. I'm. I'm not sure because I don't remember GPS being one of the things that you can do while an app is in the background. But I'll I'll check on that. I'll check the developer notes and, and see what it says. All right. Uh, another rumor. Oh, we just love rumors. Oh, wait. We skipped the, the fact that Apple rolled out uh, iTunes 10.6.1. Huge update. No, not really. <laughs> Fixed a couple bugs and that was it. Yes. Nothing special. There you go. Okay. Go get it. Apple is supposedly working on a five-inch Retina display device for 2013. You have this uh, this written here. Any idea what this is? Something new? It's either a big iPhone or a small iPad. Take your pick. So there, <laughs> there's again with the rumors. People are saying that a seven and a half inch iPad is coming out, and yet this yep. is a five-inch device. Well, you know, it would make sense that they would be testing all these sizes. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean they're all going to come out. I mean, we know that Apple tests tons of form factors and sizes and models and and cases. And so this is probably just one of those kind of getting leaked Mm -hmm. out, but they can't confirm. They can't really state it as as fact. So they're just like rumor. 
Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were testing a five inch and a seven and hell a six and a nine. You know, what the hell? Let's test them all. But sure. I don't think that's that's going to come to market. Mm-hmm. I think a seven inch is more likely. You know, the thing about we're talking about where we keep our phones. The, the one thing I like about the phone is how you can fit so much and, and display so much on such a small device. But at the same time, I think that if you make it a little bigger, it's going to be uncomfortable when you carry it. No matter where you put it, your pocket, your belt, whatever. A seven inch, yeah, no. a seven inch, because uh, people are you're like, gonna ah, have to keep it in my in back like, pocket. Well, who does that? No, nobody. Fat people with really big <laughs> pockets. Wow. That's who. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what you know? The bigger the pants, the bigger the pockets. I got it. I got it. That makes sense. <laughs> my logic is sound. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Casey has spoken. Uh, uh, Apple TV may actually come out in yay. 2013. Yeah. Uh, so this is an article on TUAW, mm-hmm. and they had a really nice uh, little mock-up. Somebody, some designer, did you know, kind of like a prototype of the display. Like we've been seeing for the oh, iPhone 5 for some time. I like these time. pseudo mock-ups. Ah, I'm just going to throw I some crap. I love to- them. Yeah. I love them. They're always so nice looking. And even though they they A, never come to pass. No. And B, they really don't look anything quite like what actually does come to pass. But I like, I like the concept. I like, you know. No. I think we lost Casey kind of thing i'm for chicken iphones you know it, it's kind of in my mind thinking outside the box and they're kind of like well what if and this is what i think it would look like if and i always enjoy seeing these yeah i looked at the the prototype basically somebody took uh an ipad and blew it up and said right, here it is put an apple logo on the bottom it it does kind of it's, well. I mean, it looks like a cross between a really blown up iPad, yeah. and the uh, the current Thunderbolt display. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look unlike the Thunderbolt display. Yeah, true. In any case, um, the article states, which we heard uh, late last year, that Apple did buy up a ton of sharp displays mm-hmm. and has um, kind of for lack of a better word, partnered with Sharp on this. Um, that's nothing new, but it seems like they are going forward with production. And um, so probably not this year, but probably like this time next year. Mm-hmm. Okay. More than half of all households in America now own an Apple device. This is pretty impressive. If you think well, about this market- is not a surprise, really. No, it's not a surprise, considering how much money that Apple has made. Um it's just that everybody used to talk years ago. You remember that years ago people say, well, oh, Apple's got like 1% market share on all PCs. They're now, a fad, you know. They're a fad. Now you find out that half of America, more than half, owns an Apple device. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a necessarily a computer. No. That could be an iPod. That right. could be an Apple TV. It could be anything. <laughs> they're Newton. all gateway drugs. That's right. <laughs> the gateway drugs for the, for the Macs. And... Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how. What other what other products do you know of where more than half of America has uh, has something from one company? From one company, maybe Samsung is the only one I can think mm. of. Only because they make so many freaking products. I mean, not only do they have phones, tablets, and TVs, but they also have um, fridges, washers and dryers, microwaves. Yeah, I could see I could see that maybe being GE years ago. Remember when everybody uh, used to have like a GE fridge yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Samsung LG. LG makes all that crap now. Yeah. And they're cheap, so there you go. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. I, I don't know. I'm I was thinking to myself, well, I don't own a single Samsung device, and then I realized that my four G Mi Fi is a Samsung from Verizon. But Yeah. I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm on for it, but logistically, Samsung's really the only other company that I could think of just because they make such a wide range of products. Mm-hmm. And Apple really doesn't, but the products they do make are top of 
each of their categories. Yeah. So. Where is Tim Cook? Um, he's in China. And what is he doing there? He's been meeting with the prime minister in Beijing and checking out the Beijing Apple store. He's uh, He seems to have been popping up all over the place the last few days. Mm-hmm. Far more so than um, Steve would. Oh, which, well, there are I mean, reasons for that. I mean, it's really neither here nor there. But I think it's it's good that he's... He's a, you know, kind of having a more public face mm-hmm. um, and showing, you know, showing up in the stores and taking pictures with people. But also in the wake of this whole uh, Foxconn mm-hmm. workers condition, you know, debacle that he's meeting with the prime minister of China and, you know, having a serious discussion on this. And I think it, it really kind of sets a precedent for all those people who think oh, Apple doesn't give a crap about workers' rights. They know full well what's going on and they're mm-hmm. just sitting up in their ivory tower and not giving a right. carrot to the wind. But this kind of takes all those people to task. Mm-hmm. Mike Daisy. Oh, snap. Calling out on the daisy. Mm-hmm. So there, uh, the article that I read said that maybe he's there to talk to the carriers, trying to get uh, more of a foothold in China with the iPhone and, and of course, the That's iPad. Right. So Their biggest carrier still doesn't have the iPhone. Right. Uh, he hasn't been seen at Foxconn, has he? I don't think no, so. No. Um, He's he's been in talks about workers' rights and conditions, but hasn't I don't think actually visited Foxconn itself. Okay, okay. All right, moving on to something that Casey had come up with about an hour ago, <laughs> called. <laughs> well, why did why do you, you know? I'm I'm talking about it like it's my uh, go. You talk about it. It's your idea. Okay, so there's a long, long list of things I want. <laughs> lots of, I mean all the time stuff I want I mean who doesn't want stuff uh, when you know I we're working on the show when we're putting together notes and whatnot and we're looking and not to say that I don't do this in my spare time anyways who doesn't read the verge into UAW and cult of Mac and in gadget you know in every morning anyways um this one uh, new product on Engadget.com called Sound Laser iPhone Speaker. Mm-hmm. It looks like an old-fashioned, like, 20s or 30s microphone. It's got, like, kind of like my microphone here, where it's got, like, a little cradle that holds it up on mm-hmm. your desk and uh, three-and-a-half-inch or uh, three-and-a-half iPhone uh, headphone jack to fit into your iPhone for the audio. But um, it's supposed to get, you know, really nice focused audio quality. And it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. So I want it. You want it? There you go. There's your speaker. You want that speaker? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. All so. You know, the one thing that I want is a little different. It's not necessarily a physical device. Um, I want... I want the Mac to support 7.1 audio. And the reason why is because there are times when I'll be watching videos on on my Mac. And unfortunately, the Mac is not designed. Even though mine does have an optical out port on the Mac Pro, um, the Mac is inherently not known to be a 7.1 or even a 5.1 audio system, even though it does support it. It's basically all stereo. Everything is all stereo. Whereas on the on, yeah. on Windows systems, Windows is all about 5.1 and 7.1 and, and having surround effects and everything like uh, that. Yeah, especially now. They all got their beats and their whatever. <laughs> but I would like the Mac to embrace multi-channel audio uh, a little more. Mm. Um, as a matter of fact, so, well, like you have... Um, on a laptop, you've got a MacBook Pro, I've got a MacBook Pro. The iMac doesn't even have, and I don't think it has an optical output port. So how would you... How no, would you it play? does. It no, does? it doesn't. I don't think it does. Wait. Yeah. The older ones did. I don't know if the current one does or not. Oh. Shoot. I don't I think forget. I don't think I've ever seen an optical port on an iMac. 
Well, maybe but, I'm thinking of a Mac Pro. A Mac Pros do. Uh, well, yeah, mine has it. As a matter of fact, yeah. I, I have a 5.1, like a spare 5.1 system um, in the uh, garage. Maybe a I'm pre mistaken. HDMI. I should try it and see if it'll play 5.1 audio. But you can't even add in like a upgraded sound card even into the Mac Pros, can you? Uh, yeah, I think you can. Well, it, it, okay. Hmm. But I'm just, um, I, I just want the IMAX or, or, or the entire Mac line to, to mm-hmm. well, I mean, with HDMI, so you, you can do it. So you want the Beats audio like the kids have <laughs> in your MacBook Pro. No, I just want, like, for example, if I'm doing something on Windows, it'll generally like gaming for example all right let, let's just say mm. world of warcraft that's a good example world of <laughs> let's War- just say that not that anybody plays it we'll world of warcraft supports 5.1 audio um mm-hmm. it may support it on the mac maybe it doesn't i don't know because i just don't have a 5.1 system to test it out with and uh you have a you have a windows machine do you not have wow on your windows machine yeah i do that's what I'm saying. It's on the on my Windows machine. It supports 5.1, but I don't know if it does but on the you Mac. You don't have 5.1 on there. I do. Oh. I'm oh. confused. So you're saying the Mac version you don't know because you don't have a Mac 5.1 system, right? I see. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's one thing I would really like to to see on the Mac because with all this multimedia stuff that the Mac does. Um, I think it's a little behind, but that's what I mm. want. <laughs> All right, let's move on. What's next on our list? So I thought I would just mention briefly, um, since I had an interesting chat with somebody at work the other day, um, a lady that I work with who is about my age, you would think most young people are fairly tech savvy nowadays, mm-hmm. right? Right. Totally isn't. Totally has no idea um, about technology or gadgets or what have you. Um, but apparently has been looking into the iPads uh, about getting one for herself and w- apparently waited because she heard that the iPad 3 was coming out and thought she would wait because clearly 3 is better than 2. Mm-hmm. Um, but since the 3 has come out, she said she hadn't really heard a whole lot, wasn't sure if it was really better or lived up to the hype uh beforehand so we talked about it you know and after um i kind of asked her some questions you know what do you do why do you want one what would you use it for Mm -hmm. um i ended up recommending the ipad 2 to her which kind of surprised me because again you know you think your lot your the logic would be Three is better than two. Clearly, why would you recommend the older one? And after using my three for a while, I I kind of have to agree with Apple in that iPad two still has, you know, a place in this world. That mm-hmm. it still has life and uh, would still be a good fit for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, she's not a power user. This would be her first iPad. Um, you know, so I think she wouldn't really see a lot of benefit or really wouldn't know the difference, quite frankly, um, to a lot of the upgrades that were put into the iPad 3. Mm-hmm. Um, and after using mine for uh, about a week and a half now, and as sad as I am to admit it, the battery life is not the same. Um, the 4G is not as great as I thought it would be. I mean, the Retina display is, and the graphics performance is a huge boost. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, mm-hmm. I'm comparing that to previous iPads. Well, yeah. All right, so let me give you an example about the graphic capabilities. This is not the best example in the world, but I'm doing something where I've got views that have um, a drop shadow. And you would think, oh, mm-hmm. how much could a drop shadow be a big deal? When I added the drop shadow to my app, it slowed down on the iPhone 4. But on the mm-hmm. iPhone, I mean, on, the, on the iPad 3... It just mm-hmm. flies through like nothing. Oh, there you go. So that's not going to help your friend, but the graphics capabilities are definitely noticeable in certain areas on the iPad. But um, mm-hmm. I haven't tried it on an iPad 2, but I'm suspecting that it would be just as slow on the iPad 2. It would it? probably be, yeah, more comparable to the 4 then in that instance. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I, I think I think you made the right call because this way you get an entry point into the the world of the iPad. Mm -hmm. She doesn't necessarily need the Retina display, and she saves a lot of money. Right, and she's getting a better battery life, which uh, I think you know again for a first timer would probably be key. Mm -hmm. Sure. So. Okay. All and right. saving some money. So there you go. <laughs> Moving on to apps, uh, as people may or may not know, I've been very heavily into Mass Effect lately, and I mm -hmm. played through all of one and mm -hmm. two. I just stop, and I just started three. And there's an app called the Mass Effect Three Data Pad, and basically what it does is it's it's a physical ad addition to the virtual game. So what will happen is you'll actually get messages on this app, and they'll be sent to your iPad as if you were playing Commander Shepard. And it's, I just started playing it like a couple of hours ago, so I didn't get a lot, but I'm already starting to get email from the characters in the game. And I'm, mm. I'm really liking the interaction of the, the, the virtual game that I'm playing and how it sort of like brings itself into the real world through virtual means, of course, mm. but, but mm -hmm. still it's, it's almost as if you're a shepherd reading a data pad. So this kind of sounds like the, uh, the Blizzard app for WoW, the um, Armory app, in a way, um, but you don't get email from you know Jaina Proudmore or anything like that. But you could. Oh uh, well, then I'm not going to download it. No, they 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 really could do that. They could. I think that would be a great idea, as if they had mm -hmm. ways of sending you um, email or, or something messages onto the uh, the Blizzard app. That's, then that's kind of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that that was kind of started in SWOTOR where the NPCs and people that you did quests for would then email or message you after the fact and say, hey, thanks for that, you well, know? No, Blizzard, Blizzard has definitely done that. I have gotten very few, but there are some NPCs that will mail you. They'll send you in-game mail. Like maybe an hour or very a day few. after. Yes, it's very, very few, but they few. do exist. So, so Bioware was not the first company to do that, okay. but Bioware is the first company to, so far as I know, because of all the MMOs that I've played, I've never seen this before. It's the mm -hmm. first one that sort of brings the 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 experience of the game that you're playing into a physical device in the real world. And I think that was probably what Blizzard was trying to harness, but kind of fell just short of. You know, their um, what the uh, uh, where you I think it's a the you have to pay that uh, premium subscription yeah, yeah. for where you can access the uh, auction house from the app mm -hmm. and manage your auctions there. That would be really great, but I think because of that subscription basis that it really kind of fell short. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, you know, nobody's willing to pay that extra subscription on top of the subscription they're already paying <laughs> for the game itself. Sure, yep. So. All right, what's yours this week? So mine is a an amazing app that you all need to rush out and download immediately oh, no. uh, that I found this weekend that kind of revitalized my love of this YouTube video. So I'm going to open it right now oh, no, and it not. is Game Center compatible. Oh no, I hear it. Whoa, back it up. There we go. Oh yeah, it's a uh, Nancat Lost in Space, and it's everything you would want in a Nancat game. What is it? What does this thing do? So <laughs> you play as the Nancat, or you can also play as this evil waffle cat thing. And um, did you ever play a uh, robot unicorn? No. Okay. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like one of the it's a side scrolling game where you're just kind of tapping the screen to jump or go faster mm -hmm. to collect things for a higher point. Okay. So you're collecting uh, food and candy and milk as Nancat, and you're tapping the screen to jump from like platform to platform as the screen just scrolls and you're just flying, mm -hmm. you know, but you're trying to stay on the platforms. And <laughs> periodically you can um, 
grab, there's joints in the game, which slow down the side scrolling. <laughs> and then there's pills in the game, which speed everything up and make it more cracked out. So that's very entertaining. Goodness. It's free. It's in the game center. Uh, maybe there I'll you check go. It out. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to go. If you want to contact us, I am at StarMike on Twitter. Casey, you are? Casey Queso, K-A-C-E-Y-K-S-O, the Casey, getting out of the chase. <laughs> we, you can follow us on Twitter, Infinite Loop TV. You can also find us on YouTube, The Infinite Loop Show, and uh, you can email us, The Infinite Loop Show, at gmail.com. And, of course, The Infinite Loop Show dot com. That's right. All right. Yes. Thank you for watching, listening, and we'll talk to you soon. I like Max. <laughs> Bye.